What's up, guys? Danny and Athena here from geeksofdoom.com, and we're going to be talking about the little things that make a movie great. Oh, wait, no, we're talking about The Little Things, the newest movie to hit HBO Max. Uh, and theaters. Another... Oh, and theaters. Sorry, we live in New York City, so the concept of movie theaters is something that I've forgotten about, which still crushes me a little bit. Uh, but yeah, uh, as you can tell, uh, we're married, if you couldn't tell, but we are currently living uh, in separate uh, locations temporarily due to uh, COVID-related isolation. Um, so The Little Things uh, just hit HBO Max. It's directed by John Lee Hancock, and this is a guy who has a pretty decent pedigree. Uh, he wrote, I don't know if you ever saw the movie A Perfect he, he World. He wrote this also. Yes, he did write this. He's a writer, director. Uh, he's been working for over 30 years. Uh, did you ever see A Perfect World starring Clint Eastwood and Kevin nope. Costner? No. Nope. It was like one of those movies I loved when I was a kid. I actually owned it on VHS. I uh, had no clue that he wrote that movie, uh, but he did. And Apparently, he wrote this movie right after that movie in 1993, and it sat on the shelves for 30 years before he wow. finally picked it up and directed it. He's also directed other movies, including some pretty good ones, uh, Saving Mr. Banks, about, I think that's about Disney, um, yeah. with, Tom, with Tom Hanks, um, The Blind Side, which won Sandra Bullock an Oscar, and... <laughs> The Founder, starring Michael Keaton about McDonald's, which was really good. And I showed in my economics classes um, it, when I teach during the day. Uh, so he's got a pretty decent pedigree. But this movie was conceived and written back in 1993. And I know we disagree on this movie. But to me, this felt like a movie that was sitting on the shelves for 30 years. What did you think of it? So I really liked it. And uh, before we go any further, let's just, we're, there's going to be spoilers. So uh, I, we can tell I, you that Danny disliked it mm -hmm. and I liked it. Yeah, uh, I, I'm not going to say it's the best movie that I ever saw. And I guess maybe Danny wouldn't say it's the worst movie you ever saw. It's definitely, oh, no, 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 no. You just watched the, mo the movie that you hated. <laughs> no, it, you see, it, it's weird because... I can't talk about this movie without going into spoilers. Okay, because so let's, let's spoilers. Let's move on. Go ahead. All right, I was just gonna say, and and I've actually seen this this exact complaint from other people. Um, it's funny. Right after I finished watching this, um, somebody who I interviewed for uh, the Lasercast channel, uh, David Weiner, who wrote and directed the In Search of Darkness documentaries tweeted that there is a scene in the movie that he was that the movie was going along and then there's a scene in the movie that when it happened it killed his ability to enjoy the rest of the movie because it was such an awful choice by the character are you talking and about the car the second it happened i went <laughs> oh i know exactly what he's talking about because yeah. when that scene happened the movie went from like about a two and a half three star movie to just pff, right off a cliff and I stopped caring about everything involved because of there's just there are those moments in movies where choices get made and bad choices get made all the time in movies where you could say okay that's how the characters would act or that makes sense it's a bad decision but I get it this right well because it wasn't like a horror movie like in a horror movie and you're like don't go into the barn like you expect them to go into the barn, but this was a serious movie. So yeah, not, you didn't expect him to get in the car. Yeah. Okay, so let's, let's talk about, uh, how about performances by the actors? And then we can talk about the, the plot points. Well, we'll talk a little bit about the plot. Very little. Um, it's uh, two detectives, one old detective, Denzel Washington works somewhere else, comes to LA because, um, because, uh, there's a uh, there's a murder and it's a similar case to one he worked on a while he ago. To, doesn't he have to like drop off like evidence? 
He has to drop off evidence. Uh, Rami Malek is a young detective and he's investigating this and they sort of team up. Um, uh, Deke, who is uh, Denzel Washington, is not really supposed to. They're telling him to get away from that because apparently the case that it was similar to that he worked on caused him to have a heart attack and like his life blew up and everything like that. So he they takes- don't tell you any of the details that Athena just said until way into the movie. You meet this character and everyone's kind of like, a, you can tell that everybody knows who he is, but they're also kind of being like a dick to him. Like, oh, don't talk to Deke or oh, Deke is back. And you're like, what's the deal here? And, yeah, yeah. and I kind of feel like I'm all good with different types of narrative structures. You, you don't want to lay your hand out right away. You don't want to give too much exposition. I get that. That's fine. Yeah. But the way that they revealed th- th- what they had to reveal in this didn't really, didn't, it, it didn't do it for me. I felt like, just tell us about that character right up front because there's something else that we find out much later in the movie, which is the cause of all of his problems, that I feel like, okay, that could have been the big thing that you waited for. It's like, this is another one of those movies. The first movie that we reviewed for Geeks of Doom uh, on YouTube was The Devil All the Time. And during that movie, we watched it together and I kept asking you how much longer is left in the movie and you didn't want to tell me because it felt so long. I paused this movie And to my dismay, only 55 minutes had gone by. And I felt like I had been laying in bed watching it for hours. And it had only been- I didn't feel that way at all. I was mesmerized. Like I was sitting downstairs and watching it with my sister and I had my mask on and I was glad I had my mask on because my mouth was like the whole time because I was just like, you know, what's going to happen? What, you know, I, I love Rami Malek so much too. I liked that Denzel wasn't being Denzel, that he was being more subdued and a little like, like hunched over and in inward and stuff like that. And then when we met Jared Leto and he was so effing weird, you know, I know that's what he usually plays, but it was just like, you, I know, I didn't, I still don't know what happened at the end. And that's what I liked about it. <laughs> you're, you, you're kind of a little frozen. Uh, and right you're now. frozen too. Oh, all right. So, oh, now you're back. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I love you, but I disagree with you about the performances. I, nothing, like Denzel, Denzel's one of those actors who's just so naturally charismatic. And yes, he's being subdued but he was too subdued. He was subdued to the point where I thought he was bored. Um, Rami Malek, Rami Malek, it it felt like he had gauze in his mouth and he couldn't enunciate his words correctly or he was trying to pull off some weird accent. I I, I don't know. Rami Malek was very, and and Rami Malek, their first interaction makes you feel like they're going to be antagonistic to each other. And then like, it felt like five minutes later, they were like buddy cops. And I was like, that was a really quick character shift. And then Jared Leto, he felt like he was piecing together all of the characters from other movies he'd done. Uh, One of the things that you'll read about this movie on social media, because it's not really getting the best of reviews, is that like I said, this movie was written in the early 90s. It feels like an early 90s crime drama. Uh, it feels like a movie, even though it maybe it was written before Seven, it feels like a movie that was very much inspired by Seven. I've uh, seen and that Jared, a lot. Yeah, Jared Leto felt like he was trying to get the creepiness of Kevin Spacey, but with the look of Jared Leto. <laughs> and... It just, none of it worked for me. And like I said to my dad earlier, because my dad watched it and he didn't really like it either. I said, an ambiguous ending is fine. I'm, I'm good with an ambiguous ending once in a while if you care about what happened. 
by the end of the movie, because of the twist that we'll get to, or not even the twist, the, the thing that happens, I, I, I absolutely didn't care at the end. I just felt like I didn't care. Like, I genuinely didn't care about any of the three main characters. And I just kind of felt like it was two hours of my life that had gone by that I kind of wanted back. So I expect, I thought that it was going to end like Jared Leto wasn't the killer. He was just the guy who just liked to mess with people and that it was going to end up being Denzel Washington or Rami Malek as the killer, as the real killer. But, uh, so, so that was a little surprising. Um, let's get to the green car because we can talk about. Yeah. So there's a, there's a serial killer in LA. Um, and, and another thing that kind of irked me, and this isn't the movie's fault, but uh, just like two weeks ago, Net, uh, Netflix just put out this uh, four part Night Stalker uh, d- documentary series with the actual cops that were involved in the Night Stalker case. And there's a line early in this movie where I think the movie takes place in 1990 is yeah. I, I think the, where it says the beginning. So the movie takes place in 1990. And one of the first lines you hear is as they're looking for this serial killer is people think he could be worse than the night stalker. And in my head, I'm going, I wish this was a movie about the night stalker. Cause it would be more interesting. And man, that Netflix series was, was much better than this. Um, but it's about a serial killer in LA and yeah. I was just gonna say that, uh, I mean, one thing that I did also really liked was just being in 1990, you know, the pay phones and the beepers and, and like, <clears throat> and the papers and like, just not- The cars, yeah. Yeah, just not, not being in the modern times. I just, I love- Yeah, I love the, movie, the movie did a good job setting itself in, in 1990. I mean, again, this director, um, he did the founder with Michael Keaton and that movie's about the found literally McDonald's from the 1960s forward. And he does a great job in that movie of like really putting you into the time period. So he's good at that. I'll give, I'll give the uh, director John Lee Hancock that uh, he's good at doing like period piece style films. And it's really weird to think that 1990 is now like a period piece movie. Yeah. But, <laughs> but uh Tell them about the part. No, all right. So they they find a body and the refrigerator had been repaired. And so Denzel Washington, who's not working with the LAPD, he's kind of just a rogue. He he takes vacation from his deputy job to basically sneak around LA and work this case on his own. And uh, Rami Malek is just like, yeah, you used to be a good cop. Help us out. Awesome. And he, he ends up putting a few clues together that lead him to Jared Leto as a possible suspect. And Jared Leto starts kind of playing cat and mouse games with the two cops to the point where he's either guilty as sin and he's he wants to get caught or there's something else going on. And it gets to a point where Rami Malek, who's like the straight edge cop here is alone with uh, Jared Leto and he pats him down and he's, you know, convinced that he's the killer. And Jared Leto Leto just goes, come on, I'll show you. Yeah. Jared Leto just in out of nowhere goes, okay, fine. I killed her. Come in my car with me and I'll drive you to where I buried her body. And Rami Malek, now Denzel Washington had like gone to get coffee. So he's like two blocks away. And in that span of time, this is 90 minutes into the movie, mind you. Rami Malek just says, uh, uh, an armed police officer goes, yes, murder suspect. I will get in the car with you. I he hesitates you, a little. <laughs> I, I will let you drive me far away into the darkness where there's no other human beings around. I will let you give me shovels. And with you standing there, murder suspect, 
I will dig holes. I totally and, thought he was digging his own grave. And, and at this point, the movie dug its own grave for me because I was just like, that is, that is a character decision that does not make sense in the script. That's a character decision that doesn't make sense in the logic of real life. Nothing about that made sense. In Seven, it made sense because they caught him. He turned himself in, John Doe. Okay, we're spoiling Seven now. The movie came out in 1995. If you haven't seen Seven, seriously, get on it already. <laughs> Stop watching now and go watch Seven. It's a much better movie. But he gives himself up and he basically says, you'll never find these bodies unless you take me. And he's in custody already. So he's been completely searched. He's handcuffed. He's put in the back of a police car. The, the police car is being tailed by helicopters. So like, there's no way that John Doe and Seven can get the upper hand on the two cops that he's with. It makes sense plot-wise at the end of that movie. This just made no sense. And from a character standpoint, it made me check completely out of this movie to the point where when it ended, I just didn't care. I mean, and Rami Malek ended up killing Jared Leto with the shovel and then Deke covered it up. And But Rami Malek was all like tortured about it. And then I'm not really sure what happened. So we're already deep into spoilers. What I got from it, and this is my interpretation of the ending. I have not done any like in, ex, extensive research because again, I don't really care. But <laughs> but uh, one of the, the missing women um, who we watch in the film, she's a jogger and, and, and the car follows her as she like breaks off from her friend. Uh, her her mom mentions that she always wore red barrettes in her hair when she ran. And so Denzel Washington at one point had basically just decided, well, I'm not working for the LAPD, so I don't need a search warrant. If you get him out of his house, I'll just go in and start looking in his apartment. Goes in, finds a bunch of like newspaper clippings. Again, it is ambiguous as to is Jared Leto the killer or is he just some really weird guy who likes to keep, you know, serial killer uh, newspaper clippings or, you know, maybe he maybe he wants to be a serial killer, but he, he hasn't done it yet. We don't know. We never really find out. And that is kind of could have been an interesting plot direction. But the the, the last scenes after Jared Leto is killed, buried, and basically his what? You're you're I didn't hear. I now 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 you're muted. I can't hear you. Talk. Say something. Now you're frozen? Oh boy. Now I don't know what's going on. Now I can see you, but you're frozen. I mean I can oh. hear you, but you're frozen. Oh, now we're just going back and forth on the we should just sing Let It Go since we're both frozen. Yeah, it's okay. I think. How many stars would you give this? Well, uh, the, the only last thing I want to say is they, to me, it was made clear that Denzel Washington bought a thing of red barrettes to give to, right. yeah, to, to give to Rami Malek as a way of saying, oh, no, no, I found this in his apartment. Don't feel guilty about it. He was the serial killer. So you're not just a murderer. But then we see that he bought a pack of barrettes and burns them with the evidence. So it's clear that Jared Leto didn't do it. And if he did, we don't know for sure. And that Denzel's just covering his own ass and making Rami Malek not feel guilty. So they're they're all guilty at the end, except for Jared Leto. Except for Jared Leto. I think we have to end this because our connection is unstable. But um, how many stars would you give this? Oh, one. Don't go watch this movie. It's, it's I would give it a three. I sort of liked it. Um, so that is all. Sorry about the bad connection. You know, Zoom, Zoom videos. Um, make sure you like and subscribe to Geeks of Doom. Uh, let us know if you agree with me or him. 
about this movie, if you've seen it, we would like to know. And uh, that's it. See you guys. Later.